Look, 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 hang on, hang on, you're not making any sense, hang on, hang on, look, wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. So, the monkey soldiers that you were using, what happened? And in this video, we'll be looking at the Devil's Betrayal expansion for Star Saga. This expansion has you facing off against the Rebs faction, or Rebels as you might call them. Uh, different species of aliens and some humans working against the Enforcers, the Council of Seven, or the GCPS. Basically... They're against the um, mega corporate rule that um, humanity is under and a lot of alien species are under whether they like it or not. Now if you follow the expansion to the letter it does say you should use the devil as one of the mercenaries unless you're using your own custom made mercenaries of course. In which case, it's entirely up to you. Comes with a couple of new mercenaries, some new tiles, some new cards, items and skill upgrades and whatnot. But let's get into it and see what's inside. So, starting with the mercenaries, this one is Hector Sanchez. He's got a robotic lower arm, a robotic eye. A uh, bit hard to paint due to how, how small it is. Uh, he's got a big grenade launcher. Yeah, that's meant to be a auto fed grenade launcher. <laughs> it's also got a grenade in hand just because. Um, not bad. Not the best mercenary, I have to say. But considering who he comes with, I think it's a fair thing. This is the other mercenary, Nastanza. Now, if you've been into the Warpath universe, or indeed Dead Zone for any length of time, especially in 1st edition, and quite into 2nd edition, you'll know who Nistanza is. She is one of the best snipers in the game, and it's the same in Star Saga. If you weren't quite sure what race she was, or is, should I say, she's an Asterian, um... She's very well known to Blaine, and in this she is very good at shooting. However, if you get her into close combat, yeah. You, I mean, you've got skills to negate close combat to a point, but yeah, it's it's not going to be pretty if she gets in close combat. It really won't be. So, on to the enemies. Firstly, we've got the Human Trooper. Uh, just a bog standard rebel trooper. Um, the pose is quite nice. Looks like throwing a grenade, which is very nice, I think. Um, make, makes a nice change from the normal sort of human pose, I reckon, where like aiming a gun forward or running forward sort of thing. It's nice. Uh, the face sculpt isn't bad, but realistically, it's it is what it is. Um, but yeah. It's a fairly nice model, I do think. For comparison, here is the human trooper next to one of the mercenaries. Uh, Hector Sanchez is a tall bugger, isn't he? But yeah, they're both pretty much 
same sort of size. Next we have the Zorak Sword Spawn, uh, so called because you've got a pair of swords. Um, I can see what they were going for with this pose, but I'm not that much of a fan. Although, to be fair, it's better than the pose they gave them in Dead Zone, but it is what it is. It's kind of like um, Sebulbra, I think it is, from the episode 1 of Star Wars, where the legs are where you'd normally find the arms, and the arms are where you normally find the legs on a lot of races. So, I like the Sorak because that makes them somewhat unique. And then compared to a mercenary, um, if both feet are on the ground, then the Sorak would be a fair bit shorter. But due to how the pose is, it's about it's a little bit shorter, but not by much. Next is the Rin Nomad, a slightly armored fellow with four arms, so you get to make multiple attacks. You'll get late dice every time you do so. So. It's not that best of an option, but it's there. It's it's there, so it's it's nice. It yeah, they are more expensive than the human troopers, but they are a fair bit more offensive. Here's his neck to Hector Sanchez. Um, about the same sort of fight, I reckon. I like the poses on these. The poses on these are very nice. They're better than the old um, in Hund model I'll say that much next we have the Sphere Hunter uh, fish people which um, the GCPS used, used microwave based technology I believe to heat their planet up and dry up all their water and they're not happy about it these have got hooks and harpoon guns which can slow people down Nice model. Um, all the enemies you get three of each, so three of these, three of the humans, three of the Sorak, three of the uh, Rin, and then three of the next one. I'll go over in a moment. And here's a Sphere um, Hunter. And here's a Sphere Hunter next to Hector Sanchez. Um, about the same sort of height. Bit more slender, but nonetheless, it's about the same. And finally, for the, the minions, we've got the Simeon Brawler. Basically, a armoured gorilla with clawed gauntlets and a face that looks like a Wookiee from Star Wars. <laughs> um, these aren't badly posed. Sometimes because of the plastic they'll be a bit too far bent over but just put them in hot water and that'll do you. Or just break them off the base and then just um, glue them back on so they're not as far down but these poses are nice. Poses are really nice. It looks like it's getting ready to claw someone to pieces. And here it is next to Hector Sanchez. A fair bit taller and he'd be a hell of a lot taller if you weren't doing the running forward pose but there it is also get two bosses starting with this guy Sergeant Eric Umasar I think that's how you pronounce it and yeah you get a rocket fuselage on his back and a rotary cannon which actually looks like it's got built in flamethrower which unfortunately you can't use in the game which it should do but it's very heavily armoured, um, not that fast but good at shooting, not much skin being shown, only on the arms really. And here he is next to Hector Sanchez, um, a little bit taller if the arm of Sanchez wasn't raised up throwing a grenade but other than that it's a little bit bulkier due to the race they are. I can't remember what he is unfortunately but his race is meant for hauling around some of the heavier weapons of the Rebs. And the big boss of the um, Rebs in this, Sheo Silverback. Yeah, he, he kind of looks like he's got some sort of lab coat on. He's... He's kind of like the um, 
simian brawlers but with a bit more intelligence and a lot more combat capabilities yeah he is he is some, worth respecting because yeah he ain't that easy to take down believe me and here he is next to Hector Sanchez like I said about the simians a hell of a lot taller you also get the stat cards for the two mercenaries and the stat cards for the two bosses I won't show you everything because that will spoil too much and stat cards for all five of the minions you'll be facing in this expansion you'll also get some cards for the Nexus deck which is exclusive to this expansion like other expansions you'll know it's for this expansion because of this little icon that looks like a wrench now the reason I'm not showing you any of the items or skill upgrades is because well it's just giving you extra ones and you'll f I think it's better if you find them out when you play the game you also get a multitude of different tokens such as these which is unstable ground which you'll get onto when you play the expansion uh, on the other side they've got darkness ones which will become apparent in this expansion when you play them you also get these two which aren't um, got matching on the other side so it's just the same uh, picture on the other side uh, this one is the power generator, this one is the water pump, which will be explained, like I said, when you play the expansion. We also get a load of these little ones, which are limping tokens when you've been attacked and successfully injured by the sphere hunters. And it's just got the same thing on the other side. You also get some tiles. Now I'm not going to show you all of them, I'm just going to show you some examples of some. Mostly these are similar to the ones from the Star Saga main game. But because of the dark uh, colours they've chosen, the white crosses do show up a little bit better. Um, apart from one which we'll get onto. Um, so I'll just zoom out. So this is a big one, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 squares by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 8 squares be 6 squares, so this is what it looks like on this side, looks like it's in the Reb's base, and on this side we've got, well, it's an open tile really, um, this would be really good for doing your own, putting like loads of scenery, doing a big shootout actually, this would be really good for that. Uh, next we have this which has some stairs so it could be leading up or leading down depending on how you get it I don't know and on this side we've got a pod which again use it how you so wish nice artwork um, pluses on this aren't too bad actually well, crosses and then we've got this one which looks like a normal sort of tile but on the other side We've got this sort of stuff. Now this is possibly one of the worst ones. It's not the worst, but it is right up there because the white crosses do not show up on this green stuff at all. Um, it's not as bad as some of the yellow or purple you see in some of the other expansions, but this is not good at all. And yeah, really, it should have done a fair bit better, but... Apart from this tile being a bit lacking, the rest of them are pretty good. And then we get the rule book for playing the Devil's Betrayal, or the campaign book I suppose. Um, like before, gives an introduction with a nice picture. Uh, shows you the contents of what's in it. Um, also goes into new rules. Uh, the story so far, which you could say this is possibly um, the main expansion leading on from the main campaign because um, the devil Shivago, I think his name is, um, was there in the main box. So, yeah, um, gives background on the two new mercenaries, Zanchez and Nastanza. 
we also get some background of where you are and where you're going and then a bit of a prologue with a nice photo on it of everyone entering the base and then we've got the missions there are six in total and then on the back we've got an epilogue as normal so that's the devil's betrayal it's a pretty decent expansion although i would say the first mission is especially for starting missions as it were it is a bit meh in my humble opinion but as you go on sort of around mission three three or four it really does heat up a hell of a lot uh, the tiles are pretty good the mercenaries is pretty good I'd say the enemies don't look that good on paper because revs you're thinking oh, they're gonna be cheapo cheapo enemies to fight it's gonna be a bit enough but honestly really entertaining really keep you on your feet and they are not to be underestimated Um, again like other expansions this goes between 25 and 40 quid depending on where you buy it from um i'd say overall quality this is possibly the best one because bits aren't missing some of the tile only really one of the tiles is pretty bad art wise well, game design wise um and everything else is there what you need so that's it for this video goodbye for now Thank you.